computers thinking about it. Yay. All right. So we're getting into like what, what algebra, algebra is about. Okay. Algebra is about solving equations, solving equations. Linear equations are just equations with X, Y, or Z, right? X is equal to two is an example of an answer to a linear equation. Okay. Um, when we get into higher types of functions, higher order functions, you know, exponents, that's getting different. But linear equations are just like when we have a linear equation, y equals mx plus b. That's a linear equation. And it allows us, that's actually a two variable equation, but it is linear. Okay. Um, all I'm trying to say is right now we're just solving the most basic type of functions. And there's a, there's a process that you'll follow every single time that I think we break down first by looking at our goal, how we do it, and then the process. So the goal, the goal of solving an equation is to isolate, right? Get it by itself, isolate the variable. So at the end of our equation, after we've solved it, at the end, we'll have, for example, we'll have x is equal to 2. We might have it as y is equal to 2, y is equal to 3, you know, z is equal to negative 17. But we're going to have it isolated where the variable is by itself on one side of the equation, and it's equal to some numerical value or some expression, you know, uh, in this case, some numerical value. Um, but when I'm looking at this, the goal is to isolate the variable. So, you know, if we peek down here at example one, when we get down to it, we see that we're going to start with 2x plus 3 is equal to 15. There's two parts to this equation that I need to move, that I need to, that I need to deal with, okay, in order to solve for x. And that's going to be part of how we do it. The how we do it is looking at how, uh, how we do this is to get rid of the other values. To get rid of the other values, what you have to do is you have to do the opposite operation. The opposite operation, okay? So the opposite of addition is subtraction. You know, and the opposite of subtraction is addition. The opposite of multiplication is division. And vice versa, the opposite of division is multiplication. So the process in which we do this, the process is that we work from the outside in. We work from the outside in, moving closer towards that variable being isolated by itself. Okay. So uh, working from the outside in, I think about like peeling an onion. When you peel an onion, what do you have to do? You have to start from the outside, right? Unless you're like some crazy ninja onion chopper, maybe you chop it in half, you pull out the middle part for it. Nobody does that. Who's crazy like that? <laughs> you go into Chipotle one time or some restaurant and somebody's cutting onions and like pulling it from the inside. You'd be like, why are you working here? <laughs> so look, working from the outside in is just like peeling an onion. And also the other analogy I use for this, this is just a tool to understand, okay? This is like a way to understand what you're doing, like a, how the method works. The other way that I think about it is breaking, break the chains, break the chains, okay? So let's look at this first equation here, example one. We're going to keep our goals in mind. We're going to keep the how and the process in mind. And you notice that I set this up kind of like number 15 from your homework. Number 15 from your homework has the equation on the left side. So 15 from last night's homework or uh, Tuesday's homework. It has the equation. And on the right side, it has the step. The step is just, uh, what did you do? What did you do? How did you go from one line to the next line? Okay. So it's kind of weird that this, that this equation, uh, solving for equations happens right now in our class because we've already dealt with a lot of equations. We've already solved and we've dealt with some things, but this is reviewing it more intensely, okay? Um, if you master the process and the how this happens, then moving forward, solving equations is exactly the same every time. There's just more complicated functions you have to deal with, okay? So let's look. Now, when I, I'm gonna rewrite this, actually. Uh, let me just rewrite it here. Because I want to show you these chains, because the chains might help some of you see it in the way that I'm hoping to teach it. All right. So look, we have that same equation. Hopefully it in the background doesn't distract you. 
But look, what kind of chains do we have? I want to isolate my X, but it's not isolated. What's connected to X? I'm going to make a little chain. I'm connected to 2 by multiplication, right? I'm connected to positive 3 by addition, right? Are those my two chains? If I could break those chains, I isolate X, correct? If I break the chains, I isolate X. So we see our chains. Well, actually, I, I want to keep it um, instead of plus. I'm just going to put an A addition. Okay. You can do whatever you want. It's just when I did multiplication. If I do that as X, sometimes that's confusing. So I use M and I'm use A for addition. All right. So now the question is, what do we go after first? We're breaking chains. Remember, like peeling an onion. Tell me in the chat. Tell me in the chat. What are we going to go after first? What are we going to go after first? Which chain are we going to break? If I am dealing with this, breaking my chains by peeling an onion, what do I work towards? I go from the what? Good, Janice. Good. Good, Mia, the addition chain. Good. Haley even knows what to do. Subtract three. Same with Janice had that. Um, Sophia. There's a chain that's further away. Which chain, which piece is further away from X? Because look, two times X, they're right next to each other. And you can even, I'm trying to give you a way to approach this in almost like a, a spatial, like the location of, of symbols. So if you could see it this way, we're actually going to go after the plus three first. Two X is one term. Plus three is a whole different term in my expression. So when I'm breaking the chains, I start from the outside in. Okay. Oh. The outside in is looking at this plus three and trying to get rid of it. Let's break this chain. And instead of addition, a lot of you already had it. We're going to subtract three. Subtract three. Okay. Now, as long as you do it to both sides of the equation, you haven't changed anything. Right? If, if Mia has 10 bucks in her pocket, right? And Sienna has $10 in her pocket. If I take... Huh, I'm not going to take money from you. But if I took $3 from each of you, you both have $7, right? As long as you're taking the same from both sides of the equation, you haven't changed anything. You've just manipulated it. Okay, so look, when I, when I subtract 3 from both sides, I end up with 2x is equal to 12. Now, this step that we were trying to figure out, we had to look for the last for last two, for this Tuesday's homework. We had to see how did you go from this line here to this line here? What did we do? We used the subtraction property. That's all we were doing yesterday. We were just saying how did you do it? What did you do? We used subtraction property because I subtracted 3 from both sides to get to this next line, subtraction property. Okay, so now we look to see what, ah, I see, I see, I see, I see, I see. When we are isolating a variable, when we're trying to isolate the variable, we're just looking at the part of the, part of the equation where our variable is. I like that question because isn't this 15 further out from the X? Yeah, but we're just looking on this side of the equation. My goal is to isolate X. So I want to get rid of everything on this side of the equation except for x. That's why I started by subtracting 3. We start from the outside in on the side of the equation that we want to isolate the x. So now, somebody tell me in the chat, what was this? If this is multiplication, how are we going to get rid of the 2? Good, Haley. Anybody else? Yep, yep, yep. Nancy, Janice, good. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, sometimes it's just I'm teaching you like a, a method. Uh, division, division. Good. Nat G. Good. Mia. Ahmed. Good. Cadence. Good. Sienna. All right. You guys are on it. So watch. Divide by 2. Now, why did I divide by 2? Because look, 2 over 2 is equal to 1. 2 over 2 is equal to 1. So when I do that, that's how I can cancel out the 2. And look what I've just done. I broke this chain. I broke that chain. Okay, so you break one chain at a time. One chain at a time. What we left, what we're left over is x is equal to six. And how did I go from this line to this line? What did I do to arrive here? Good. I divided division property. 
And writing property, you know, that's just put P-R-O-P, prop. Give it some props. All right, are we done? Are we done? We're done, but I'll take a question from Sienna. What's up? We're done, so we're going to square. Okay, so I just have a question about that. So one of the questions I have is like, how do you know if it's property is quality? Mm -hmm. I see. You would say both of them because this had two steps. The equations you had for the homework only had one step. So the one step that you do, you're going to list that. And these are properties of equality. That's what these are. Okay. All right. If you're confused, don't worry. We have other ones to work on. Okay. I'm going to give you an uh, one that's like a step back. Okay. And I'm not going to do this on the right side. We're just going to practice a little bit. We'll do one step equation. So if you need some extra work, go ahead and... This is more related to last night's homework, okay? Okay, now remember what the goal is. Oh, um, Arnold, there's no difference between this and what you've done before. That's why I said it's kind of weird that they put this lesson here, but they're trying to define it in a way, I think this lesson should have been like earlier in the year, okay? So it might be confusing because you guys already know how to do this, it's just the standard that they put right here. So maybe think of it like this is uh, easier than you thought, right? You, you know how to do it. I'm just giving you like a refined approach to it. So when it gets more complicated, then we're okay. Okay. So, I mean, think of it that way. Okay. Uh, so for instance, uh, let me just double check. Arnold, what do I do here? What should I do? You might even put a line down the equal sign. I like to do that to keep it neat. What should I do here? Good. You got it. I look to see what is the chain. It's subtraction. To break the chain, I add 7. Add 7. See ya. What's left? Because negative 7 plus 7 is 0. You see? So because I did it to both sides, I'm in good. I, you know, I'm, I'm good. Uh, and I get 17. And what did I do to go from here to here? Here was my original, my original equation. Right? And what I did was I used the addition property. Okay? I think it's that they put this lesson in a weird spot. You guys starting to see that? It's stuff you already know. And it's just like, how did you go from one step to the next? You already know it. You just have to, you just have to jot it down for me. Okay. So this is where, you know, this is the step. That's how we did it. You always start with the original and you work your way down um, to solve for it. So I'm going to keep going. I'm going to go to the one that was a little bit trickier. That was from the homework last night. And that's going to be down here. I'm going to move this. So go ahead and jot down this equation, jot down this equation. We'll see where we're at after this. Maybe, maybe we'll, uh, we'll do a couple more, but um, this lesson at this part of the year usually goes pretty well because we have been dealing with it. And tell me in the chat, why is this one a little bit trickier? Why is this one a little trickier? Yeah, I agree. I agree. All right. I'm going to go ahead and always put that my first step is it's just the original. That's my original equation. How did you end up with this original? OK, um, the reason why this is a little bit harder is, look, there's an X on this side of the equation. There's an X on this side of the equation. Oh, man. Before we can just break the chains, but there's a step we have to do first. The step we have to do first is to get all of the variables on the same side. So there isn't a wrong direction. You could do it either way. You could do it either way. But I need to get this um, this 2x onto this side of the equation, or I need to get this 8x over to this side of the equation. I have to decide before I start putting my chains on there. I'm going to move my, my variable to one side, all my variables to one side of the equation. Okay. So actually, there's no distribution happening here. We don't have any parentheses. There's no parentheses to distribute. I like it. I like it. Haley, awesome. Move the 2x because it's easier. Think about it. Why is it easier if we end up moving the 2x? I was about to say this. You're psychic. 
Good job. All right. Why is it easier if we move the 2x instead of moving the 8x? Because I can move that 8x. I could subtract 8x on both sides. But what would happen? It's easier to move the 2x, so it's not negative. Good, Sophia. Good, Rocco. Good, Haley. You guys get it. Okay, so our strategy is to keep our variables positive, and it's easier to subtract 2x, subtract 2x, instead of subtracting 8x. Then we'd end up with a negative 6 over there. That's not easier to deal with. So my first step is just always, always get all your variables to one side. Minus 2x, minus 2x. Okay? If I have positive 2x and negative 2x, oh man, wait. Okay, okay, I want to not have to write this one over again. <laughs> if I have minus 2x and positive 2x, these are going to cancel. They're going to negate out, negate. The word negate, negate means when you combine, you end up with zero. When you negate something, you combine something to make it equal to zero. 2x minus 2x is zero. We negate out that term. So look, we end up with 6x minus 5 is equal to 1. And what did I do in order to get to this step? I used the subtraction property. You see how easy this is now? The steps and saying, how, what did you do? You're just saying what you did. And if we got the approach down like we'll have in this lesson, then putting what you did is actually pretty easy to do. <laughs> Let's look at our chains. It might be unnecessary to think about chains, but I'm going to do it for those that need it. Okay. We have multiplication. We have subtraction. We're going to work from the outside in. So hold up your hand. What are we going to deal with? Are we dealing with the five or the six? Yep. 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 Good. We're dealing with this negative five. Negative 5, negative 5, because that's further in. If I'm just focusing on isolating the x on this side of the equation, I have to get rid of everything connected. All those chains we got to break. So I'm going to get rid of that minus 5. Instead of subtraction, I'm going to add 5. And what I end up with, negative 5 plus 5 negates out. This negates out, becomes 0. 6x is equal to 6. I like where this is going. How did we go from this step to this step? We used the addition property. Okay, are you now seeing that last night's homework is pretty quick? You're just saying, yeah, you're just saying what pro seeing what property you're using. Good, Lily. All right. And we still have multiplication. What should we do? Instead of multiplying, we should do the opposite. Nice. We're going to divide by six, divide by six. Thank you for all those that said something in the chat. Divide by 6, divide by 6. Look, 6 divided by 6. Well, we broke that chain last time. We broke this chain. 6 divided by 6 is 1. So we've gotten rid of the 6. Okay? What we have left over is x is equal to 1. 6 over 6 is 1. This is 1x. We don't have to put 1x. We could just put x. 6 divided by 6 on this side gives us 1. And what do we use for that? What was our property? Division property of equality but we can just put division property once you're done guys please square it out whenever you have an answer always label it so that you can see quickly where the start and end of the problem was okay all right give me a thumb sideways down for what we are looking at today thumbs up sideways down how about in the chat oh good next to your video or in the chat good okay okay i'm seeing a lot of thumbs good Awesome. Awesome. Anyone else? Some people are frozen. <laughs> okay. Um, tell me in the chat if you'd like to see one more. That actually was about the hardest one we had to deal with uh, in the last homework. So I don't know that we have one that's harder than that. I could look. I could look in the homework. Let's see. I mean, there's one with distribution. Do you want to see one with distribution? Maybe. Do one real quick. All right. All right, uh, I'm not going to do the steps for this one. We'll just uh, we'll just work it out. We'll work it out. Uh, let me do some mental math. Yeah, that'll work. Okay. So here, in order to deal with and get to that x, we have to do something that starts with a d. What should we do? 
because it's not just that x is connected to 2 by multiplication. 2 is actually connected to x plus 3. We can't make our change yet. We have to. Huh, huh, good, Jessica. We have to distribute the 2. Jessica has the answer already. Good job. 2 times x. And we've done some of this already, so I'm going to just do it. Everyone okay with that? Everyone okay with distributing? We've seen it. Good job, Haley. Good job. Awesome. All right, and now we're back to where, where we started. So sometimes you're gonna have to distribute. It's not, um, you know, it's, it's math three is where we'll divide actually by, we'll have different options. And there's actually two ways you could have done this. You could have right off the bat divided by two on both sides, you could have done that. Um, but I wanted to show you that you can distribute as well, okay? If that confused you, don't worry. There's always a bunch of ways to get to your answer in general with everything, okay? Uh, look, I have a chain here of multiplication. I have a chain here of addition. Let's break that addition. Minus 6, minus 6. See ya. Negates out. That equals 0. So we have 2x is equal to 10. And finally, divide, divide, by 5. And so quick. Ah, okay. That's it? Yeah. That's it. Okay, so um, I know we've done something similar to this, so don't think of it as something that's brand new. It's just a little refined because, you know, I do, I do want you to keep in mind, especially after the last homework, that we are, you know, this is the original. How did we get down to here? We did distribution. All these steps are just doing, are, are the steps that, uh, how did you get to the next step here? The next step to get down to here was subtraction, right? And then last we did division to go from here to here, we divided by two, okay? And these are all properties, okay? But that is something from the last homework. That's what you had to do for the last homework. Okay. Uh, if there are return functions, then it doesn't matter. Oh, I see. Um, good question. I'm going to go ahead and do that. What if we had this? What if we had 2x uh, minus x is equal to 10? This would be a one step solve. Okay. Um, this is a really good question because what are we going to do? We just have to combine our like terms. Just like when we had an x on this side of the equation, we moved them together. Well, now we have them on the same side of the equation. So this is 2x minus 1x equals x. 2 minus 1. You look at the coefficients. This is 2. 2 minus 1 is 1x. But you don't have to put the 1x because it's the first one. We just leave it as x. Just leave it as x. And that would be x is equal to 10. And for that, if I was doing this, you know, from the homework, you would say this is the original. And what did I do? I used the subtraction property to combine those like terms. Good question. Thanks. Thanks, Mia, for bringing that up. Okay. So when you have really, uh, when you combine like terms, you're also doing the, the uh, you're doing the property. You're doing the operation that you, that you need. Okay. All right, give me a final thumbs up sideways or down. How are you feeling about it? Thumbs, thumbs, thumbs. Nice, nice guys. Thank you. Thumbs up. All right, I'm gonna stop the video then. Thanks for watching guys.